And, uh, you know, by the way, Garrett Cole pitched a hell of a game last night. He, he went did. eight innings strong, threw about 102 pitches or 103 pitches, whatever it was. And he looked good last night. And uh, he was he was up in the upper 90s. And uh, so was Jake. Uh, again, you know, you talked about, you know, sitting him down, giving him a rest. And maybe that would have been a prudent thing to do. Last night, Ronnie was talking. And uh, he was talking about when Mel Stottlemyre tried to teach him how to throw a slider and how Ronnie said, my shoulder was killing me for about a week. And uh, he's right. And I talked about the prevalence of uh, sliders that uh, Jake had thrown in his previous outing when he came out and he had the flexor tendon issue. So now he's got a lat, he's got a flexor tendon, and he's got a right uh, uh, and a shoulder. And now I would think that the prudent thing would definitely do, he's missing his next start, sit him down, relax. And uh, remember, you know, these guys didn't pitch all that much last year. So right. this is like the opposite of the LeBron argument in NBA, where LeBron is claiming that the NBA started too soon. And, and I remember at the beginning of the year when LeBron said, hey, we're going to, you know, have a, a propensity of injuries because we're coming back too soon, especially if you played in the finals, like he and the Heat did last year. But, you know, in this case, I don't, you know, pitchers didn't throw that much last year. And now all of a sudden they're throwing more, and it seems like they're throwing harder, and then we have this whole sticky substance situation. I don't think that has anything to do with it, but uh, I, I do know that last night, like everybody else, there aren't enough superlatives in the dictionary to uh, describe Jacob DeGrom and his brilliance as a baseball player. You know, he's more than just a pitcher. Uh, he can hit. He can run the bases. He looks like a lanky athlete who wants to be playing other positions. That's why when he warms up during the, you know, during his off days, he's over there at shortstop playing the position that he loves. And uh, we all see it. And he plays it with such ease and joy and and everything else that there's nothing worse than having your top flight pitcher, one of the greatest already of all time, uh, you know, getting taken out of games early. I, it's it's frustrating. It's maddening. I just want the guy healthy. I want to see him be able to go a full length, kind of like what Garrett Cole did last night. And um, and it, and it's really a shame. It's really a shame. Now, I guess we'll find out more today. An after MRI they, today, After yes. they do an MRI. So I guess be... they said they're an original look at it, no structural damage. They're going to do the imaging, the MRI, whatever, uh, today to find out really what's going on. But even if they don't see anything. There's something wrong. Right, clearly. I mean, there's no way that you could be leaving these starts and back-to-back. And they did find something the last time with the flexor tendonitis, and he still went out there and pitched. I mean, I I have not been in an environment where, or on a team, we've witnessed as fans, you've been in a situation where you've been so good that you won an MVP in pro sports. But I think that what's going on here is we're all so just in love with what he's doing. How could you not be that when Jacob DeGrom says to the Mets and the trainers, hey, I'm fine. I'm all right. Hey, the MRI just said uh, flexor tendon. I deal with tendonitis all the time. I'm totally fine. I'm telling you, I'm fine. And everybody's like, okay, 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 okay. Because he's in the middle of this unbelievable season. Now, there's two things going on here that I think are both true. And you've said them both. One was nobody knows his body better than Jacob DeGrom. True. The other one is, sometimes you can't listen to athletes when it comes to injuries. That's true. true. So both those things (laughs) are existing at the same time. And by the way, you know, it's great what the Mets are doing. They win again. They're beating good teams. But this is still June regular season baseball. If the Mets really have designs on going somewhere, you don't need Jacob DeGrom making this start. You need him making that start in October. Well, I I do know. Well, assuming you're going to get to October, you're going to get to October. But... um, you know, he he's had a profound impact on the entire pitching staff, because uh, especially at home last night, and Gary was talking about it there, ERA at home is just basically awesome. I mean, the entire pitching staff is doing a great job uh, with him or without him, but certainly he is the leader, and you could see how everybody is reacting to him in the dugout. I mean, when he gets the hit last night, yeah. I, and uh, Gary was saying, goes, I've never seen this. Here's a guy, and we're in the middle of the what was the second inning, and the pitcher's up at bat, and everybody's standing <laughs> because he's up at bat. And what he, and of course, in Jacob Degrom fashion, low key gets the base hit, knocks in the run. The fans go crazy. So he is a, a beloved player. He should be a beloved player, and he has been that since he since he got here. And he's just gotten better and better and better. But I also know that somebody better sit him down and say, look, there is obviously an issue here and is on the right side of your body. There's some reason why you have inflammation, why you are having soreness, 
and you need, to get, you need to shut it down and take care of this thing so we can have you for the stretch run and we can have you for the second half. So I do agree with you now, especially after this. This is the third time this year that something on the right side of his body has given him problems. And it's also frustrating for the manager. It's frustrating for the bullpen. And nobody's you know, hates Jacob Grom for any of this, no. but he owes it to his team to be honest and to be right and to to get it right, even though, and, and believe you me, he sees it, he hears it, he hears the fans, he hears the love from the fans. Uh, he's feeding off of a lot of that, much like Matt Harvey did when he came out in the ninth inning mm-hmm. in, the, in the World Series. It's it's It feels like, even though Jake is not that personality, it feels a lot like that. Like he wants to be there for everybody, wants to prove that he still is great and he's going to be better and he's in the midst of a historic season. But, I, you know, uh, to me, discretion right now is the better part of valor for him and the long-term prospects for the Mets. That's what makes this so hard is he's so good. I mean, think about what he did last night. He is cruising. He's looking better than any pitcher in baseball. And then he's got a leap. Seven strikeouts you know, out of eight. No, what, what, eight strikeouts out of nine. nine. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and, and if... Sometimes you see a guy, you know, maybe there's some injury there. Remember when Aroldis Chapman, he had a couple of dips in his velocity and he was getting smacked around, and we said, "Uh uh-oh, is this an IL stint coming? Because that's what we think when we see a guy start to get hit, you know, when he's been dominant, and then all of a sudden guys are driving the ball off of him. We haven't seen any of that from Jacob DeGrom. I think 25 straight innings without a run. So that's what makes this so confusing is the fact that when he pitches – He's still the best we've ever seen. I feel like, you know, if there were ever a moment for a perfect game to take place, it would have been last night. I know. I mean, because his ball, again, you know. That's a good lineup, though. I mean, that's not some sort of schlub team. No, it's not. There. No, it's a good team. And that's that's what made it all the more impressive. I know. Watching him do what he was doing. And, you know, when you think of, when you think about uh, this, this whole discussion about sticky stuff and all that other stuff, I've watched. I don't know. Ninety percent of the Jacob De- Degrom starts since you know since he got here, mm-hmm. and he's been great every single. Almost you know he's had a couple of flops here and there, but I have never seen that guy use anything or or have any weird twitch or grab something or you know look like he is using you know is he using rosin? Could he be using you know uh, is you know suntan lotion or whatever uh, sunblock? I, I guess he could be, but I I don't know. I mean last night. Just watching that ball dip and watching that ball move and watching the velocity at which he throws his high-end fastball to his low-end slider, you're like, I, not many people can do that. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I, and, it, and I was alive for Tom Seaver, and Tom Seaver was my favorite Met of all time and to the point where Craig gave me a statue of the guy. Yes. I got a statue before uh, the Mets put one up, for I God's know. sake. And there's been a delay in that. But. Yeah, I know. But, I, but to me, like – this is this generation's Tom Seaver, Gary, and, and Keith, and, and Ronnie were talking about last night. Is that's why we—he's a treasure for what he does. He's a treasure. So think about this: in New York here right now, we have Kevin Durant and we have Jacob Degrom. You know, th- those two guys are the two best players in their ref- respective sports. Think about that. No, I know. It just doesn't feel the Kevin Durant thing doesn't feel like New York to me. It just doesn't. Well, Jake is, you know, is a is a Met from the beginning. It's a homegrown Met yeah, who's yeah. been here for a while. I mean, the Kevin Durant thing, I mean, we've barely yeah, that seen him. But that performance the other night, man. Yeah, I was great. I it mean, there's nothing to show what else you can you say? Great but players can do and and I want to see I, what we I, I think I think you said this yesterday. You want to see Jake in those moments that Kevin Durant's experiencing right now. Right. And that's why every time he takes the mound now, half of me is saying I can't wait to see how good he is and the other half of me is saying, oh my god, he better make it out of here alive. I mean, that's the way I feel. Is he going to, is, it, is the next injury or the next reason that he's going down to the clubhouse the reason that keeps him out for months? Like I ah. say, hey, uh, Sandy Alderson, this is three different injuries on the right side of your starting pitcher's body. Right. So his body is telling him something. His mind may be telling him something else. I know he knows his body. It is now up for the new, and now it is up to the New York Mets to figure out what it's going to take to get him right. And there's only really one way I think you can do this, and that is by resting him, assuming that this MRI comes back. Not show. I, I don't want to hear about any labrum tears or any of that yeah. stuff. Inflammation's one thing. Tears are another. And I I just wonder if it has to do with 
the amount of sliders that he has been throwing the last two games. And, and I'm getting tired of watching the SNY cameras go into the dugout mm-hmm. in the middle of the game, yeah. watching him talk to, to Jeremy Hefner. Mm-hmm. And right. then going right down to the dugout. Yeah, and he was pissed going yesterday, and you saw him animated. You never really see him that animated. He's kicking something on his way down the steps. And yeah, into don't the do that either. Don't please don't do that right. either. I don't need a broken toe. I don't need any of that stuff. Just take a break. You're all right. You can take a break. You can take a two week break, three week break, whatever it takes. Go, go all the way until the uh, the All Star break. Al believes it's all in his head. I heard this morning on the warm up show that Jacob Degrom is not injured. This is all in his head. He believes it is psychosomatic, uh, sort of like someone who gets the second shot of the vaccine and had heard about the symptoms and then starts feeling the symptoms, even though they didn't have really the symptoms. Right, and and who took off of work. Al used (laughs) because he was worried about the symptoms. Yeah, yeah, I... Okay. So he said it was all in his head. It's psychosomatic because everybody's getting hurt these days in Major League Baseball. So Jacob DeGrom, this is Al's take. Jacob DeGrom is thinking he's getting hurt when he's not getting hurt. Right. If you're hurt, you don't strike out eight out of nine pitchers you face. You don't. Well, back get, you face, yeah. Yeah. It's, just, it's getting silly at this. Like, it's getting so annoying, sports, with all these... In, like, people, these guys aren't all injured. They're just... that. If you throw a pitch... When you were a quarterback, Boomer, when you threw a ball all game long, did, did you not feel a thousand percent? Of course not. Doesn't mean you were hurt. Come on. And also, according to Al, Jacob really doesn't want to compete, doesn't want to be out there. Right. If he did, he'd be out there. Oh, it's a twinge in my elbow, twinge in my shoulder. Yeah, we've done all the tests. Nothing's coming back. He did say after the game that he felt terrible leaving the game because it was Why putting did he stress leave on the because he wasn't feeling right. He was worried that if he kept pitching, then maybe something bad would happen. Yeah, at least, at least he was honest about it. That's yeah, but, that's that's the other side of it. Hey, you know what? Remember when you got hit in the uh, the shin and, and the I had the physical missed, uh, you had a bump. appearance you had a bump. that showed the injury, yeah, yeah. and you missed the entire season. I mean, the entire season with a little bump on your shin. Well, it was a large got, bump. Yeah, I got hit with a golf ball on that shin, uh, on, on my shin, but I still showed up and played. See, that's, I, I, I was the, the guy that you wanted Jake DeGrom to be right now. Well, no, if, you, it, and you if just Jacob shut, DeGrom had a big... your whole self down. Had a big lump on his elbow, sure. But when you have nothing hmm. and no tests come back... Yeah. Get out there. Yeah, Let's you, go. Yeah, you had ice right on that <laughs> on that shin, and you were texting mommy. Mommy, I hurt my I hurt my shin. Uh, I mean, it's unbelievable. I can't play anymore. Oh, look at that! Look at that! Oh, bump. Wow. Oh, look at that! Wow, you yeah. and Eddie on the bench, where you guys normally are. <laughs> so <long>. full games. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I don't believe that. Where Al's anger is coming from, if I may diagnose it, is the fact that it is a cumulative effect with baseball injuries that I think he's getting annoyed at. Jacob DeGrom, to me, is on a different level of competing. He is great. I think he wants to be out there. I don't feel like he is taking the easy way out or doesn't want to compete. No, 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 no. No, Al says no competing. Right, that's what no Al heart believes. For Jake and that's what Al is saying, and that's what Al believes. That's right. not what we believe. I know. Overall, that's not what the show believes. No, not at this all. This is Al's individual opinion about Jake DeGrom that he does not want to compete. And I think that it comes from the fact that he is tired of hearing about baseball injuries. Because his favorite era of baseball was back in the 70s and 80s where these guys wouldn't get hurt or they'd play through injuries. It was a different time and it's driving them nuts. So now what he's doing is he sees this last night and it's just bubbling over and now he's trashing the wrong guy for it. But he does have a point overall that there's too many injuries in baseball. You just do not want to hear about obliques and hamstrings and quads and groins. And, you know, I mean, what about like, when uh, Pilar gets hit in the face with the baseball, oh, that that's okay? different. Yeah, that's that's fine. That's okay. You're good yeah. with that. Yeah, because that's an actual injury. Okay. How about when somebody you know tweaks a knee or like you know in basketball, you know, we saw what happened with Kawhi Leonard. Yeah, ACL injury. Yeah. yeah so uh, that's okay. You understand that because you know yes. LeBron James is complaining that you know he told everybody, and I do remember this that before the season started, that there was not enough rest time for the bodies, and, and he is claiming that's one of the reasons why we're seeing all these stars being injured. Although, you know, Kyrie Irving barely played last year, and Kevin Durant didn't play at all last year. Now, I know Harden played an entire season, but he didn't make it all the way to the finals. Well, here's a good question: Harden and Kyrie. How do you look at those two guys? One you saw an ankle roll; the other one is a hamstring injury. How does how does your mind parse through those two situations? I mean, if they're officially diagnosed and they show up on MRIs or X-rays or whatever it is, 
fine. But when you continually don't pitch and you get run through every machine imaginable and everything comes back fine, get out there. No, it didn't, no, though. He, had, he came back with tendonitis. It came back with flexor tendonitis. And they still sent right. him out there. That's not a real injury. Yeah, it doesn't sound to real. <laughs> doesn't sound real. You know, I, I, I will say that. That is total crap. And any quarterback that played in my era will know this because we used to have real two-a-days, and they used to last at least five weeks, sometimes six weeks, if you were in the Hall of Fame game. And the only the only day that we would have off would be a, a, a like a Wednesday afternoon. That would be our day off mm-hmm. between those five weeks. Um, <clears throat> so you'd wake up in the morning and you'd go out and you'd throw the ball. And because there was dew on the on the on the Jeez. ground, the balls would and tend to be heavier towards the end of practice. And then you come out in the afternoon, and if they didn't dry out, they'd still be heavy. And you'd have that flexor tendonitis, and you'd have that elbow pain, and you'd have to stick your arm in like a ginormous uh ice bucket tube mm-hmm. and you'd have to keep it in there and just to, to just to dull the pain so i i know what these pitchers are dealing with you know throwing a football is a little bit different than throwing a baseball but I, it's it's uh it's annoying to say the least and you know you can tell when something isn't right you could just well, especially just jacob de i mean he's on Top of the world of his craft, he understands when things aren't feeling right. He knows his body, but I would just say for the Mets now, they have to protect their investment. Yeah. They have to protect the best pitcher in baseball, their team, their entire team, and the prospects of winning a championship. That's the thing that's got to be on their mind too. And they've already shown that they can win. You know, some games without them. I mean, they 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 have shown that they can win with a lot of without a lot of their key players. And I think they you know they could have a problem, like when McNeil comes back and Conforto comes back. What, who plays and who doesn't play? I'm just, yeah. I mean, these guys that are playing, you know, here's the thing. I think Kevin Pillar has become like the face of the Mets because of what happened to him. Yeah. And now he wears that mask and now he's out there. Uh, Jonathan VR. I mean, he gets hit in the side of the head with a baseball last night, stays in the game. Sure. Dominic uh, uh, Smith gets hit in the knee. Doesn't even flinch, by the way. I don't. I, what is he doing in the batter's box? I mean, don't you even <laughs> try to get out of the way? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess so he not. Did, and he gets hit right of the knee, and he stays in the mm-hmm. game. So how many times have we seen issues like what happened with VR last night, Smith last night, where those guys immediately come out of the game? Yeah, I mean, all and they stayed in. So what does that? Well, so what does that tell you? There's a there's a toughness factor with no, the Mets. Well, they want to be in there. The, the players are invested in the team. Plus, they're also shorthanded as it is, so they yeah, but, know. But, but they're invested in the team, which is a great thing for us as Mets fans. They are exciting. Mm-hmm. The Yankees win two now in a row against Tor- Toronto. Not so exciting. Yeah, but last night was though the ninth. The ninth inning was a little exciting. Uh, Gary Sanchez throwing out Vlad Guerrero Jr. at third base. Gary Sanchez hitting a home run, a pinch hit home run, forty six feet, the, looking like he did when he first came up for the first time in years. Uh, he looked great in a pinch hit situation, and stayed in the game, and then contributed defensively, which is just nuts. Maybe that's what he needs, just like you know, just a few innings a game to have an yeah, impact. just like that. Yeah, just dip in and dip out and make right. an impact. Um, but I thought it was a little more exciting uh, last night for the Yankees, and they've won a couple in a row against a team in their division, which they had to do. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and don't forget to hit the red bell so you're notified when we have new content.